Hi, in this video I'll guide you through rendering this scene from scratch using EVNX. So be sure to stay until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackave.com. I have a complete set of assets for building the environment, with all the materials prepared. I downloaded these assets from Quexel Bridge. I don't want to record the entire creation process. I plan to provide a time lapse of the environment design, as our primary focus will be on the rendering process. Let's set a playback speed to fast. I'm currently using EVNX, Blender's real-time rendering engine. There is only one point light in the scene. You can download this project for free from the store website that I mentioned earlier. Alright, our scene is set up. In the next step, we'll add lights and then proceed to render it. First, I need to remove this point light. I want to add an HDRI. Ensure that you are in the shader editor window and the world section. Press Shift A to add an environment texture. Then click Open to select and add an HDRI. I have many textures here that I've downloaded from HDRI Haven. If you are not familiar with HDR, I have a detailed video on lighting available. Connect the texture to the color input. The outcome looks good. Now press Ctrl T on the texture to add a texture coordinate. This will allow me to rotate the HDR. To rotate the HDR, I use the Z axis. I believe a different HDR would work better, as the previous one was too bright. I don't have any work left in this section anymore. Now I need to change the settings. Navigate to the world section and then choose the settings. In the shadow section, ensure that shadow is enabled. Sometimes they may be disabled by default. This controls the shadows associated with the HDR. I also need to adjust the jitter setting, which I explained in detail in the tutorial here. I need to lower all the settings related to jitter, as it can help eliminate shadow leakage. I haven't noticed any major changes yet, but activating ray tracing will make a substantial difference. Next, I need to adjust the light threshold. As you can see, using lower values for the threshold will increase the intensity of the shadows. Alright, this value is effective. I think I can slightly increase the intensity of the HDRA. You can use the strength field in the world settings or through the shader editor window. Next, I'll navigate to the render settings to configure ray tracing. Make sure the Jitter Shadows option is enabled. If it's not, the Jitter option for the lights will not work. Additionally, you can increase the number of rays in the Shadows section to improve the quality. Next, let's enable the Ray Tracing option. As you can see, this improves the overall quality of the scene, enhancing both reflections and global illumination. 
You have two options here, screen trace which is the better choice for real-time rendering. Make sure to set the resolution to 1 for optimal results, as a value of 16 provides the lowest quality. If you are interested in learning more about these options in detail, be sure to check out the tutorial here. Max roughness will improve shadows, but avoid using a value of exactly 1. A value between 0.8 and 0.9 is more effective. Next, navigate to the screen tracing. The precision field allows you to enhance micro details. When I adjust this value, you'll notice some changes in the shadows. Increasing the thickness will enhance the intensity of the shadows. Press the zero key to exit the camera view, then move closer to the objects. Now let's compare the differences between a low thickness value and a high thickness value. A thickness value of 10 is effective. Great, now let's move on to the next section, which is FastGI or Global Illumination. We can toggle between Global Illumination and Ambient Occlusion since AO is not available in EV Next. Increasing the number of rays improves the quality of GI. The distance setting determines how far the GI is applied within the scene. Increasing the thickness enhances the intensity of the contact shadows. Additionally, the bias affects contact shadows, resulting in deeper and more pronounced shadows. Now that everything is set up, we can begin the rendering process. I've made a few adjustments, such as replacing the ground texture. I've also added these trees, along with a few other minor adjustments. And this is the view, but let's add an important fact, volume. I already have an advanced fog volume setup, you can check out the tutorial here to see how I create it. I can add it to the scene using a pen. Additionally, you can download this volume for free from the store website. This is the fog I imported, and it has a slight resemblance to a cloud. However, the intensity is too high, so let's reduce it. Select the fog and then navigate to the volume section in the material settings. Next, reduce the emission. Keep in mind that this will decrease the emission, not the density of the fog. I can lower the intensity through the shader window, but the shader itself is rather complicated. Don't worry about the shader, I'll guide you on which values need to be reduced. The first value to adjust is in this multiply node. Adjusting this value lowers the intensity of the high fog. Okay, this is better. As you can see, the scene contains god rays. The next step is to change the color space in the render section. I need to choose the Chronos option from the list, a feature introduced in Blender 4.2. It has a warmer tone, but I can adjust the contrast level if needed. First, let's make slight adjustments to the exposure and gamma settings. Next, in the lock settings, let's choose a low contrast option. Now let's compare this with AGX. There are many noticeable differences. Now, for the final step, I need to apply some effects in the compositor. Navigate to the compositor window and enable the Use Nodes option. Next, I need to enable the real time compositor by setting it to Always. Press Shift A and then add a glare node. Choose Bloom from the list provided in Blender 4.2. 
and then just the size and threshold. Reducing the threshold values will create a more spread out glare effect. Lastly, set the quality level to high. Next, include a lens distortion effect. Enable the fit option to avoid curvature in the output. I mean this result. Next, I need to choose a value for the dispersion. This looks good. The last node I want to add is the color balance. I can use it to adjust the tune of the scene. Each channel corresponds to a specific color in the scene, including lift, gamma, and gain. I'm aiming for a result that leans towards blue color. Alright, let's take a look at the final result. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.